Anti forensic is something that attackers would use in order to make uh, investigators life hard. That's what they do because, you know, um, as I said before, so we as a forensic investigators, we have forensic readiness. So we recommend forensic readiness, meaning preparations for uh, to be able to uh, conduct forensic investigation effectively, efficiently. OK, at the same time, when attackers or when any criminals uh, before they do anything, they would take some actions in order to make investigators life harder. Right. Anti forensics, also known as counter forensics, is a common term. For a tech set of techniques aimed at complicating or preventing a proper forensic investigation process, they will use different other different methods. Uh, they would uh, you know, delete files. They would uh, encrypt files. They would uh, protect files with the passwords. So then and uh, they will protect systems with um, the passwords and mobile phones with the pin numbers. So then it will interrupt and prevent information collection of the forensic investigators and it will make difficult the investigators task finding evidence. So it's really hard. So then uh, the files are deleted. You need to we need to conduct. Uh, uh, we need to recover the files in order to, uh, you know, find the information. And then these are anti forensic techniques that are commonly used data deletion or file deletion, password protection, uh, steganography. Steganography is something that attackers would hide information in different other formats. OK, and then data hiding in file structures. Uh, we I think we discuss in deep. So let's look at, uh, look at a couple of those. So first one data file and uh, file deletion I demonstrated last time. So deleting files and uh, recovering files. And password protection. So, if the password protected file, we would have to use the password recovery kits, right? So, if the passwords, now let's say if there are documents that are password protected or zip files that are password protected. So, then we can use something like passware, uh, pass, sorry, passware, yeah, passware, uh, password uh, recovery kit. So, there are number of password recovery tools out there so we, we can we, we are using those and then steganography is something that we use in order to uh, you know uh, hide data in different other formats this is one of the common ways uh, let's say uh, some of the uh, criminals they use uh, images to hide their information for example if i go to quick stego this is one of the tools that are free that can be freely downloaded. I'm going to open an image. Um, let's say. Yeah, I had I think a couple of images. Let me just go in there. Uh, dangerous, I think. JPG, this one, Obama's picture, right? So then let's say we have something a uh, confidential to be. Um, uh, Protected. Let's say this is a confidential message. I just randomly copied, uh, you know, a uh, message. So I'm going to say save message. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to say hide text, and then I'm going to save message. All right. So once I do that, I can in, you know, say this one is CHF file. I save the file. That's it. I'm going to close it. So once you do that, it will be uh, hidden in a jpg image let me just go in there to see um the same location uh dangerous let's say this is the file uh jpg file actually so this is the file that i used to hide data and the file that i that is created is this one chf file Yes, CHF file. Sorry. Yeah, I did this one. This one. But there are no different, right? So if you go in there, you can every file that actually I do this one actually I purposely created uh, once to show the difference. That is 300 pixels. But other than that, every file will pretty much have the same uh, size. So for a naked die, you don't understand or we don't uh, understand the difference. So then if you go to quick stego tool again. And then if I open the message. 
an image that we hide the text message. CHF file, so this is the one, right? Uh, March 13, sorry, 19. So here you see the message, but this is known as technographic technique. So once you, now let's say if you conduct an investigation, uh, conduct an investigation and you found that uh, the criminals uh, computer, there are heaps of images, but uh, when you look at the images, the size of the images is more than its usual size, more than usual size. So then what we can do is we can suspect it can have some stenography and then you can analyze it. So then there are some uh, forensic tools like Gargoyle uh, Forensic Toolkit where it can it knows about uh, known about 20 30 uh, steganographic tools or technographic algorithm so then it can uh, validate the images are steganographically choose and there are different kind of steganography as well not only images so you can hide files in another file hide files hide hide text files so hide messages in images files video files audio files mp3 files videos and different kind of uh, files uh, we can hide and even a uh, folders blank folders you can hide files and the next one is data hiding file uh, data hiding in file system structures that again uh, commonly used one let me just go in there so here uh, i think i i'm not sure that if i show this to you let me just show you uh, this one as well let's open up a command line here sorry so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to dangerous uh, CHF5 folder and then I'm going to create notepad. Let's say CHF5 readme.txt Then I'm going to say Kushant txt. So it creates a notepad file, note file. I'm going to enter my name here. It's easy to demonstrate. Right, I enter some data and then I'm going to close the file. OK, when I close the file, if I do BIR, here you see CHF5 readme text, but the uh, occupants, I mean the storage and the size of the file is zero. It cannot be because I entered some data, right? So if I opened up uh, this file uh, from here, so here you see you can't see any data. But if you remember, I entered some data as well. So let's say I'm going to create another one. Let's say from here, create one here. Right, and then if I do DIR again, you can see it's zero, still zero, right? It doesn't show you any data, but if you want to, I can create actually some data, let us see HF5. Now, if I do DIR, it shows you 96 bytes. Now, now it shows you 96 bytes. And if I want, I can delete all the files, all the data. And if I do here, it shows you zero. But if I want to retrieve the data that I entered, I need to enter the whole thing at Kushanta, right? When I do that, then it shows the this file. The meaning, it keeps this information. Uh, yeah, and if you go in there, you can see it on me as well. So this file, this this data stored in a file structure, because my 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 uh, volume is NTFS formatted one. They are they have a specific data stream between or even under the operating system known as NTDS, uh, NTFS data stream NDS. Okay, so that is uh, this way attackers can hide information on a data structures. 